Hello, friend. It's been a while. Wait a minute. Wrong show. Hello, folks. It's Top Gun here, and I got a good one for you. So, today, I'm going to try and make a shorter episode. Yeah, we're going to go for it. So I'm not going to talk to you so much. We're going to look at just Paul Sex, the single side is taking. Let's let's make it a little more understandable. I'll come at you tomorrow with another video to top up some other thoughts I'm having. Um, maybe go over some other maths. But tonight, we're going to we're gonna try and understand the Paul Sex single side is taking and even look at some math theory. All right, so we've got Pulsex. If you got Pulsex tokens or you're planning to get Pulsex tokens, they let you vote in here. That's awesome. They get bought and burnt. That's awesome for price. Um, oh, and uh, you can stake them. So you could provide liquidity with them. I, I, I'm not going to. That to me is uh, like goodbye tokens. Like, okay, I might put a Hex Pulse X pair and say goodbye to the tokens for the principal if no one else does it. <laughs> or just to support it, be like, okay, I'm going to pair 10 of my Pulse X tokens in there. Just 10 of them. There, there's a little bit of contribution. Get that pipeline going. But I digress. So, yeah, liquidity providing. Um, well, I did get asked about liquidity providing, so maybe I'll segment this video. But first off, we're going to talk about that because I definitely did talk about uh, farming a little bit and liquidity providing in my Pulse X math on the last one that I did a few days ago. So pretty much you've got a few options. So yeah, when you've got your Pulse X, you'll be able to vote. Um, you could provide liquidity and possibly farm, but that's not what I'm going to do with my tokens. So instead of providing liquidity, there's a single sided staking. Um, where is that? Oh yeah, pools. So instead of farms, pools. So the idea behind this, when it came out, oh, party token, you saw it, it disappeared, goodbye. We can click on finished. There, there it was. Um, really, there was that few people in there, or is that what I stay? No. Huh. Anyway, um, this is a single-sided pool. So it's similar but different from a hex staking contract. The big difference is there's no time lock. Your tokens aren't disintegrated and reminted, and you're not earning more Paul Sacks. Yay, party token! No, you're not earning party token either. But it's a party. No, no, it's not. Party token was a placeholder. Okay, it was a here. This is an example of how things could work a game of Monopoly. Um, you don't get to take the Monopoly dollars and take them to the store. There's not going to be actually any token named Party Token. So the idea here is that you can stake your tokens to earn yield, but from what? Well, that's the question. That's the real question with pools. So let's go ahead and look at a math sheet, okay? Uh, we'll do a new one here. So let's assume... Like, I used some examples before of Hedron um, or Palsty. They, uh, they, they awarded to hex stakers. Okay, so that's nice and simple. But here, what if we get a new project? We'll, we'll call it uh, Hedron 2 or something. All right, and um, maybe Palsty 2. Palsty 2. Um, and how about wait two? The reason these are all number twos is because their contracts are already written, they're already running, they've already done, they're already doing their business. But when Paul Sex launches, there'll be a DAO which will be able to vote. So different projects will come and go, hey, we have some tokens to give away. Like we've got. Um, an insane number because we're hedron and we love to go mint crazy. So here, have fifty trillion. <sighs> um, sorry, not making fun of you, Alex. Okay, maybe a little bit. Uh, love the love the mechanics though. But wow, token overflow. But that price action anyway. Um, looking over at Paul D. Let's say 
Um, they didn't mint very many. So let's say in this run, they uh, only mint, only provide 500,000. And then wait, um, they're like, you know, we're just going to throw you off with this second project and we're only going to put out um, 10,000 tokens. I know that's just weird. This is okay. These could be named anything. It could be uh, literally, um, yeah. Um, Okay, so by these renamings, they had nothing to do with the original names, okay? I do not believe he draws this or that any of these are these. I'm just, okay, let's, let's say randomly here. Okay, some random projects, they'll have whatever name come to Pulse. And because none of them are direct scams, they don't actually steal from your wallet. They're providing liquidity. They just might not be well built. Okay, well, they'll get past the census. Like, these people are giving away free money. How are we going to say no? So what would happen in this case is you would end up with three pools, three party, to three third-party tokens that are not Richard Hart that are available. This is, again, hypothetical land. So um, now that we've got our hypothetical land, okay, so... Let's take a look here. I'm gonna need some more spaces. Need some more rows. Insert. 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 All right. So hypothetically, here. So now that we know the total number of tokens supplied, the mechanic I think that would be like hex the easiest way to explain this um so forget the math of t shares and bigger pays better um all that jazz so someone comes along and decides okay well i'm gonna stake one pulse token in there and that's all that happens and then somebody comes along here and says i'm gonna stake 10 and someone else comes along and says they're gonna stake 10 and then someone else comes along and says they're gonna stake and then over here, we get, you know, 10 million staked versus one. Okay. All right, so we've got some random numbers. So what happens here? No matter how the math is laid out, generally in the pool, the APY for this, because only one person staked, is going to be this number divided by this number. Oh, all of it, apparently, all of it. Okay, so that's great. Now that we also know that it's all of it, I want some commas. Didn't I ask for commas? Oh, about... <laughs> okay, but then we have some more questions, like what's the price of these tokens when they hit the market? Like which ones are you going to want to stake for? Well, before we get into that complication, let's keep going here. So, in this case, this will equal, for this person, well, if there's this many, if there's this much here, let's divide it by the total amount of tokens that are in the pool, 25. And then that number, well, this portion, that should be equal to what they've staked in here. Okay, all right, and then do that again and again. Oops, oops, that's right. Um, I need to change that then to B8. And change this one to B8. Ah, uh, and now you see that out of the 500,000, 200,000 went to this guy, 200,000 to this guy, and 10,000 to this guy. So the difference of how many people are staking starts to matter here now again this is going to equal this divided by i'm going to put this into brackets this one plus 
plus one below it. Then we're going to close those brackets so that function can complete. And then multiply it by this one. Ah, almost all of them. And um, this one will be equally, well, this guy gets whatever's left over. So um, this minus this. <laughs> um, I don't know how many decimal places we're going to have to go to to get to. There we go. That's how many decimal places we go to. So proportionally, bigger will pay better. Um, it'll get split proportionally between those that are staking in it. Okay, so if you thought of each pulse token like its own T-share, even if they threw in a bigger pays better bonus. Now, who runs this? This is where the, the curiosity I had was. Will this staking or coin offering come from their smart contract? Will they dictate the terms of how much pulse X gets locked to unlock staking or get this or that? Or will the staking protocol, the way the API is divided, be determined by the PulseX DEX? So will the token or the DEX determine how this is run? Because if it's the DEX, well, then we can assume it's going to run a lot like PEX. Now, this ran, and I didn't pay enough attention to the details. Um, <laughs> party earned, view contract. We could t take a little bit of a deep dive on this. Um, new contract. Was there really only five tokens in all of this? Was there that few people that participated? No. Wow. Okay, no, I do not want to deep dive into this. That'll be a black hole. Um, but uh, I didn't pay enough, close enough attention when this happened to the actual math, how this pool is split up. But no matter who's running it, logically, it's going to be split up to those that are staking, and the amount that you have staked will matter, most likely. So I doubt it'll be a situation where two people split it exactly, even if they stake different yields. However, there are some projects right now where it claims it's like, no, we don't care how many you did. Just as long as you got in, you get your claim portion. Okay. So different projects have different mindsets. This all makes it very, very hard to try and speculate what an API, APY will be. And another thing is nobody has any idea how these coins will do over time. For all you know, this one does a 1,000x. This one does a 10x. And this one does a hundred X, but then this one does a funny thing and actually makes all the way to 10,000 X. This one goes up to a hundred and this one rugs. Now you started staking, you started earning. Did you sell it when it went up? Did you hold it? Well, that affected the APY, didn't it? <laughs> when you're trying to look at the value of what's going on with this token. And then, oh, what if the prices shift on you again and it goes way down? And, oh, okay, way down. And then somehow it does like a lunacy thing and, hey, we're still alive. Um, oh, wow, the APY changed a big time too. And let's just say these were three month snapshots. We're nine months in from tokens you've collected. When do you ditch them? When do you claim them? How are you going to speculate an APY? The thing is, this is a money printer. Anybody that wants to give away tokens on the PulseX DEX to people who know how to hold and say, yeah, I can hold my tokens, well, that's going to be reinforcive to price. That's a bit of game theory where, yeah, this is encouraging people to come give away their tokens to PulseX holders, to the Richard Hart community without crop dusting the heck out of uh, uh, hex stake wallets. So you can run your pulse X out of something separately if you want. Now, just because something gets fastened down doesn't mean it'll be safe. It should be safe, but do your own research, read the contracts, wait and see if you can't read contracts, make sure other people you know have read the contracts or gotten in and gotten out safely and made some money. And okay. So as things come available at different times, 
the weight of where people throw their Paul Sachs will determine like if there's a lot of people competing in one space, yield will likely be low. And if there's a few people competing, yield will likely be higher. But there may be a short, small amount of coins up for grabs. So even those a few people, the yield might not be so big. And there may be more people, but there's so many tokens available that the yield does seem huge in the concept of tokens. But then the price of those tokens, like this is an all over the place game where it's stop trying to do this complicated math. The idea is you bought the Paul Sachs and the price is going to go up. So if you get so greedy that you just can't hold it anymore, you can sell it and let the buy and burn eat it. Or someone else try and grab your position before the buy and burn eats it. Or maybe liquid loans protocol will get forked and you can mint stable coins against it as its price goes up. So it's a constant money printer in a loan protocol. Or you can get involved in new projects because you're bored, but you don't have to waste any of your cash on them. You can be like, yeah, I'll take your free coins and then I'll speculate in your future growth. And then maybe I'll get involved and make a YouTube channel and talk about how great you are because I think you're changing my life. Probably because I got some big free bags, risk-free. Uh, motivations are a funny thing. Uh, so I am still waiting for my big bag of free coins from someone. No. <laughs> oh, well. No, I uh, I bought in. That's my thing is I paid. I put my risk in. And so, yeah, I talk about my speculation. This is what I'm learning. This is what I see. This is what I like. So Paul X, yeah, it's not hugely defined. It's uh, we had a test run of an example token and it gave it out in some portions and I collected some, but I didn't really see the math behind it. But the general idea logically is the more people that participate, the less you're going to get. It's that simple. I can't really do a whole lot of complicated math on this one. That's about it. Um, the hex single sided staking protocol is a safe place where you can't take any impermanent loss. Your hex isn't going up for liquidity. It's just basically a temporary promise not to sell. Instead of like hex, it's a future promise not to sell. Like I will not sell until this day at least. With Paul's chain, it's like how long are you not going to sell? For now. Well, what about tomorrow? Mm. What about an hour from now? Mm. But for now? No, not going to sell now. <laughs> like... Uh, all right, so if you want yield, it keeps it off the market. It keeps it in those pools. Okay, but no lock. Oh, that's cool. That's nice. So if I don't like this token and the price starts tanking, I can move to another one and collect yield from a different one. I can split my Pulse X amongst these pools to collect different tokens in different amounts. I have choice, being my own bank, what projects I want to get involved in. And that's the point of coolness on this, which might be too much headache for people. In which case, just hope for a liquid loans protocol. If we can get a USDL Mark X, you know, for USDL X or something for Pulse X, like, yay, a secondary stable coin that, huh, the stability pool will probably be a secondary thought with the buy and burn. Awesome. I think that would be cool. Um, there's a simple way where, oh, my value went up. I can mint some more, take out some more loan, and take out some more loan. Oh, I can take out some more loan because the price just keeps going up. Okay, that's simple. Or I can get involved in multiple projects. I I can start to be a entrepreneur and try and figure out my way through the thing. Or just be a degenerate and kind of gamble without risking any money, without any impermanent loss, and just putting the protocol in and being like, yeah, you know what, I'm I'm going to try some new things. That's the point of this. So the APY, how do you measure those opportunity costs? Future speculation. Um, sure, there'll be plenty of rug pools that get free coins, but there might be early pumps. Yeah, might be able to get out. There may be some long-lasting gems, and there may be many that are confusory. There may be the odd scam that gets through. This is kind of the wild, wild west and a new concept that's being thought out. And the game theory behind it, though, a way to lock up your Pulse X that's different from Hex. You know, get these time lock rushes where you can predict when people are going to unstake. Like, the pool will end in, say, three weeks. Like, okay, all that Pulse X is going to come loose by then if there's not another pool starting by then to encourage to go in. Or maybe it'll go to other pools that are still running. So they may not all end at the same time. 
it's going to be chaos. It's going to be fun. And at first, I expect very little. Maybe one, maybe two. Who knows? But over time, the hopeful idea is by the next bull run, you're going to see dozens or hundreds if you haven't sold your Paul Sachs by that. I mean, I'm not a financial advisor. I do get my information out of fortune cookies. I is not actually a joke when I say I've taken brain damage in the last two years. But here I am sharing what I learned in my thoughts. You can do with it what you please. I'm not taking any responsibility. So, yeah. With that, this is entertainment. I'm glad you guys come in and hear what I'm thinking and do your own critical thinking against it. If you don't agree, awesome. If you do agree, awesome. We'll get screwed over together. <laughs> Um, because I at least I put my money where my mouth is and that's the only thing I've got going on here is I'm not really telling anyone what they should do I'm just telling you what I'm doing or what I'm thinking of doing or what I wish I could do that's that's what this show is about me educating what I find out as I find it out um, not in all cases sometimes I'm like wow that's kind of dangerous like a loaded gun I better find out more about it so I can talk about it accurately before I do other times I'm just so excited. I'm like, yeah, you know what? Richard Hurd made a tweet. I'm going to make some math that shows you how you can earn Pulse X by single-sided staking. Hey, that's the one of the first earlier videos I put out on the math where I had it all right. I was talking to the AMAs, right? And then that one tweet, I was like, I revamped it and did an episode. I left it there. I'm like, yep, I make mistakes. I got excited. All my mistakes in the market in the last year have been emotion mistakes. There has not been many but yeah, when they happen, they happen. Um, the one that I will famously always eat is the hex one. Um, we'll go to the day, and we'll just we'll, we'll back up here. And I've got a great, great history of buying the dip since I got in. Buy here, buy here, buy here. Um, but this this lovely place right up here, right about here. Yeah. Yeah, I had a New Year's full moon. Okay, go ahead. Laugh it up. Laugh it up. Every other buy has been in the valley in a dip. But yeah, I had a New Year's full moon. So with Paul Sex, no FOMO. No FOMO. Stake it and forget it. Like there'll be a time. Like you look at the pool ending in five weeks. Okay, put it in my calendar. Mark it on the phone. Siri, remind me in so many weeks. Awesome. Uh, you go back and you move your Paul X to some other pool and start collecting something new. Um, and then take those tokens and either keep them if you believe in it or sell them if you don't. I like to think that's pretty simple. So read white papers, learn more about crypto, or even just gamble because it's like, well, I can't lose my Paul X. Um, just maybe watch and make sure other people, if you're going to gamble, make sure people betting the project's not a scam. You're not accidentally injecting Ms. Melissa's code because you can't count on the census network to protect you from everything. Security is something each person has to take personally. Not your keys, not your crypto. Hardware wallets are smart. Or learn Linux. Those are, your, those are just some good choices. Um... Yeah, you know, uh, it is what it is. So hopefully this is me actually trying to make a quick video. Um, probably still 20 minutes or 30 or whatever, but there's the math. This is as much as the single-sided pools can be explained until they go into active circulation. But even then, like the APR will be determined by how many people are in the pool splitting it. Probably how many tokens specifically are in the pool splitting it. So... Oh yeah, that's 28 billion. We're splitting all the tokens. Um, I was a very small portion of that. Sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, 28 billion. Oof, I don't have that many. No, no, I wish, I wish. Uh, so yeah, yeah. When these pools become available, they should be fun on testnet. I doubt we're going to see any more of them in example, and the math should become pretty simple if k4k hasn't done a math video on the apr i don't know if there's a bigger pays better they could take that scaling number from the hex math and put it in here to encourage the larger whales to lock up even more pulse x to try and grab a larger amount 
They could, but I don't think they have to. That's pretty much the only question I have. And I mean, is the token provider going to be able to dictate any terms in their contract? Because that would be curious. You know, if they're going to be having the ability to make the pulse X stakers jump through, this is something I actually do not know. And, uh, you know, if Jesse or Katie actually know about this planned uh, ability in the function, whether the APR is governed by the pulse X DEX or by the contract of the token offering, that is that is my question of the day for this everything else that's what i know all right thanks for tuning in thanks for having fun uh hopefully you get a gold star for staying to the end until next time stay frosty